presence that's here with us this morning. And Lord, we thank you, Father, again for this time. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. All right. Good, good, good. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Father. Praise Jesus. Well, first of all, I want to give reverence to the Father, to King Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Honor to Pastor and his lovely wife. Let's give them a big hand clap. To all of the uh, pastoral staff and uh, ministers, let's give the elders, the leaders, let's give them a big hand clap. And uh, to our dear friend Katie, Susa, Leslie, and stand up the three, the, the three, stand up. Jeannie, of course, Jeannie, but stand up, stand up all three of you. Amen, amen. Let's give them a big hand clap. And then my wife of over 40 years. Let's give her a big hand clap. You know, I, I like to say this, and if you'll give me a little latitude. You know, the original man, even prior to sin, the father looked at the brother and said, it ain't good for him to be by himself. I need to make him some help. Now, brother, if you needed some help before sin, look at somebody and say, you sure enough need some help right now. Amen. I can't help it behind every good man is a great woman making him be good. So, let me do this. I'm going to try to behave. <laughs> Only a little. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try. Now, um, let me do this. Um, because I was sitting facing the pulpit, how many of you have never heard me in person before? Raise your hands high. Well, praise the Lord. How many of you were here last year when Katie and I were here? Let's praise the Lord for everybody. So, um, you know, um, two books were supposed to be here, Face-to-Face uh, -face with God, Volume 1, and Face-to-Face -face with God, Volume 2, but only Volume 2 got here. You know, but, you know, I don't worry about it. Look at somebody say, don't sweat the small stuff. Mm -mm. So anyway, I should probably say a scripture. So Acts chapter, you don't have to turn there because by the time you get there, I'll be gone. But if you want to make yourself a little note, you know, Acts chapter 2, like verse 17, you know, the Holy Spirit has come like a rushing mighty wind. You know, verse 1, you know, on the day of Pentecost, you know what I mean? They were one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the place where they were sitting, and there, there were divided tongues like a fire that sat on each one of them, and they got filled with the Holy Spirit, and they started speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. And then, since it was 9 o'clock in the morning, somebody thought that they was drunk. And then, you know, Peter, get up and he say, okay, I'm black so I can talk like this here. <laughs> Peter, get up and he say, you know, these folk ain't drunk like you suppose. This is the Tony Kemp version. Everybody got their own version. You know what I mean? They got the message. They got the passion. This is the Tony Kemp version. These folk is not drunk like you suppose. But this is that that's spoken of by the prophet Joel. Shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I'll pour out my spirit upon all the flesh. Look at somebody say, are you flesh? Look at somebody say, then the Holy Spirit 
is being poured out on you right now, whether you feel it or not. So the young men is going to see some visions. And the old men, they're going to dream some dreams. And all my servants and all my sons and all my handmaids and all my daughters, in those days I'm going to pour out my spirit. And they're going to know the word of the Lord. They're going to prophesy. So anyway, way back in around oh, 97 or 98, somewhere in there, in there, I was minding my own business. <laughs> Look at somebody said that was a miracle from God. <laughs> and so, so Jesus appears to me, and he he's standing like this, and he lets me know I'm getting ready to go through something. I let him know I'm not interested, <laughs> with a whole lot more passion than that right there. <laughs> and so he comes up to my ear and he lets me know it's still going to happen stands back looks at me and disappears because he knows I know if he says it twice look at somebody say it's on now <laughs> this is when I found out and I probably should mention this to you because I'm going somewhere look at somebody say he's not just wandering <laughs> look at somebody say don't be wondering about his wandering you know, that, uh, <laughs> uh, second, you know, 2 Corinthians 4 and 7 says this, we have this treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. But the Greek word for treasure is the word thesaurus, which is a treasury of words. So when you get a revelation or a visitation, Look at somebody and say, it's a treasure. But I've noticed a pattern in the Bible that after the treasure come to trial. Now I'm going somewhere. Look at somebody and say, he going somewhere. But he old, it's going to take a while. Because James 1 says, my brothers and my sisters, count it all joy. Not if you fall into different trials, but when. I haven't grown up to that yet. I really don't like that scripture. Look at somebody say, pray for the preacher. He need help. Look at somebody say, are you his first cousin? <laughs> Are you counting it all joy when you fall into different temptations? Knowing this, watch, the testing or trying of your faith. Now, you know, we say stuff like this, you're trying my patience. But the Bible talks about trying your faith. Everybody say, after the treasure comes a trial. The trying of your faith produces patience. Let patience have its full effect that you may be mature and mature and complete, lacking, which means prior to the trial, there's something that you're lacking. But it's not in your born-again spirit by the word of God and the Holy Spirit. It's what you're lacking in your soul. And so what the trial does is it brings up in your soul that which you've been denying has been there. If you are married, your spouse is there for your perfection. Your spouse, all the stuff that was cute when you were dating now gets on your reserve nerve. I'm talking to him right now. T text him. Tell him to get online. Because see, see, um, we got these people. Look at somebody say, he's talking about treasure. He's talking about trial. He's talking about the exposing of the soul so that you are recognized. 
that you need to take the treasure, apply it to the trial, and get your soul well so you can get a brand new treasure. I just shared with you a pattern. Because James, <laughs> yeah. Because it says you're lacking something prior to the trial. And the trial exposes in you that which you deny or minimize or rationalize or justify. Later on in James, like one, uh, chapter 1, 21, 22, it says receive with humility the implanted word which is able to heal, save, deliver, purify, cleanse your soul. Everybody say treasure, treasure. Trial. trial, think the word, speak the word, do the word in your soul, get healed, and get a greater treasure. Here's the thing. I have to go here because, see, if I don't go here, you, some of us, actually believe that you can pray your way out of this process. Look at somebody and say, that good-looking preacher. Make sure you say that part. Look at your neighbor, please. And say, that good-looking preacher. Say, you cannot pray your way out of the process. Think of crazy stuff like, if I just fast, it won't happen. If I just pray, it won't happen. I remember when I was pastoring, I passed the pastors. Now, there was this woman, and she was going through. Mm. And she said, Lord, Lord, get me out of here. Get me, get, 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 get help. <laughs> Finally, Jesus came to her in a dream, called her by name, and said, Catherine, I am not going to take you out of this. I'm going to walk you through it. Huh? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Huh? He leads me beside the still waters, right? He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake, right? He restores my... Right? Right? Yea, though I walk through the valley. Look at somebody say, you can't even run through the valley. It is when you are in the valley that you meet brother sandpaper who rubs you the wrong way and sister bucket mouth. But you don't know she's sister bucket mouth until you tell her a secret and then you find out your best friend got a best friend that ain't yours. Okay, I'm gonna leave you alone, I'm gonna leave you alone. I'm gonna leave you, I'm gonna leave you, I'm gonna leave you alone. I'm gonna I'm leave you alone. And then you got trust issues. Well, Look at someone and say, well, act like you're in the Baptist church. <laughs> Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because if there's any fear in your soul, in the valley will reveal it. Because fear will always bring you into lack and hold you there. I will fear no evil because I have you, your heart, and your presence. You're going to direct me and you're going to protect me. Your rod, your shield. Your rod, your staff. Hmm? While I'm in the presence of my enemies, <laughs> now you're going to anoint my head. Look at somebody say, 
I've been wanting to tell you this for a long time. Look at him and say, I want to tell you this for a long time. Your head needs some help. You anoint my head with oil. Come on now. My soul is being anointed right now. My soul is being anointed right now. My soul is being anointed right now. In the presence of my enemies, in the midst of my trial, I'm being anointed with fresh oil. This oil is bringing to my head a supernatural healing. Even in the way you see your spouse. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to help you with your spouse. Over here is a man. See the man? Over here, be the whoa man. Whoa, man. Over here, I'm in the man's head is a series of boxes. And none of the boxes are connected to any of the other boxes. Over here, the woman's head got all kinds of wires. It's like the internet highway. Everything is connected to everything else. Over here is a man. It's a simple man. <laughs> he can only think about one thing at a time. And he has a special box that he really loves called the nothing box. Ain't nothing in it. It's called going fishing. It's called channel changer. He just changes it. He ain't really looking at anything. He's in his nothing box. You over here, you walk over to him, and you say to him, what are you thinking? <laughs> Nothing. Because your brain is wired, it's impossible for you sisters to think of nothing. You're always thinking about something, so you think he must be like you, and he's lying. But all the brothers know that one of your favorite things to do is think about nothing. All the brothers who know it's true, raise your hands. Look around the room at the brothers. So then when you try to get in the nothing box, it's no longer a nothing box. Look at somebody say something's in it. Look at somebody say, so quit being offended because he's got something you ain't got. Nothing. I know I'm teaching good. Because y'all tripping. Well, I've been working on one thing. Because see, if, if I could get you to understand, brothers, if I could get you to understand that <coughs> you're overrated. You have overrated yourself. You think you get 10 points for getting up, 150 points for going to work, 
500 points because you ain't having an affair, you come home. And the woman you married to, she gives you one point for getting up, one point for going to work, and one point for not having an affair. Because she got up, she cooked the breakfast, she fried it in the pan, she went to work, she got the kids ready, she got them dressed, she washed the clothes, she dried the clothes. Look at somebody say, and she, let everybody see it, you got 15 points. And you think you're doing something. And then you come home while she's doing something and you in front of the nothing box. Look at somebody say, it's getting too close to home. Yeah, just, just the way we operate. Now, I'm going somewhere. Just the way we operate is different. I can look at the brother and say, got a haircut, huh? Yeah. That's the end of that conversation. <laughs> Over here, got a haircut. Girl, let me tell you what they was talking about at the beauty salon. I told her to do this over here. She didn't do it. I, I, it's, the color is just off. I don't even know if I'm going to go back there. I, I, I got this issue with my hair. You know what I mean? What do you think? Maybe I should do something different. You got an opinion? <laughs> Honey, how's my hair look? <laughs> you did something with your hair? Look at somebody say, your head's being anointed with oil right now. No, no, you got to understand, we've been listening to Billy Joe. I love you just the way you are. Don't change the color of your hair. I don't want no clever conversation because I'm lazy. What? Huh. I wonder how he's feeling. How you feeling? All right. Why don't he ask me how I'm feeling? Because look at somebody say, because he's dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> it's going to take a healing of his soul for him to get outside of himself, to enter your world, to begin to ask questions about what you're feeling and why. And see, let me help you with your mama or with your daddy or with your big sister. The one who you're not good enough for, who's always criticizing you. Look at somebody say, you can't do no right. Here's, here's what's in their head. I know it's crazy, but it's in their head. The way they love you is by trying to get you to be perfect. They just want you to be right. Now their desire for you to be right is right. What they think is right may be wrong. But they're loving you, trying to get you to be perfect. So when you resist being perfect, you don't love me. Because if you love me, you would agree with me. So you taking this as, I'm not okay. But you're missing 
what they're saying about themselves when they look at you, which is, I'm not okay. You, you sisters, you know how y'all walk past the mirror? You know how a brother walks past the mirror? I'm a fatter version of, of when I was young, but I still got it. Look at somebody say, my head is being anointed with fresh oil. The person who's hurting your feelings already has their feelings hurt, but you see them as being controlling and perfect and, and insensitive when they're the most sensitive person in the room. Look at somebody say, the treasure and the trial. See, there comes a point in time where you stop letting words bother you. Let me have that, Deborah. Look at somebody say, when your soul gets healed, that stuff don't bother you no more. Because you reinterpret their behavior. Because when they're trying to make you right, what they're saying is, is I'm not right, but it's too painful for me to focus on me. Look at somebody say, quit taking it so personal. Let your head be anointed with oil. The heart's right, but the way they go about it ain't right. But they think it's right. Are you still here? Okay. Those who love your instruction, nothing shall offend them. So I have to see past what you're doing to see what you really are. Look at somebody say, what you've been avoiding? Look at somebody say, what you've been projecting? Because the truth of the matter is, you don't see people as they are, you see people as you are. Are you all right? Okay, anyway, so what happens is this. Jesus tells me I'm fixing to go through. And this is when I made a discovery. Look at somebody say, this ain't even even the message. Look at somebody say, this ain't even the message. Look at somebody say, this appetizer. I start going through. This is when I discovered that God was a godfather and the Holy Ghost was a hitman. And the Godfather put a contract out on my carnality. Look at somebody say, you can run, but you can't hide from a Holy Ghost hitman. I would love to tell you that I surrendered my soul. All to you, I surrender. But I'm a Gentile. I got my healing squealing like a pig. Come on now, somebody. Oh, see, I know, I know, I, see, I, 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 I know, um, apparently you don't understand the scripture. You read it and that's like, ooh, that's a beautiful scripture. But let me help you understand the Bible. 
Look at somebody and say, he, you're fixing to get some help. <laughs> Jesus be saying stuff like this in Mark 11. He say stuff like this here. Come to me. I know you're tired and burdened and weary. I give you some rest. Then he says, let me show you how I'm going to get you some rest. Take my yoke on you. Look at somebody say, after you in the yoke, you fixing to learn some stuff. Everybody say, he the big ox, you the little ox. Look at somebody say, he fixing to work, and you better go along for the walk. Here's the stuff you start to learn. He says, listen, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Here's what you learn. He don't want to go nowhere. But you want to go. Look at somebody say, your neck is learning something. Look at somebody say, he's ready to go and you don't want to go. Look at somebody say, your neck is learning something. Look at somebody say, he wants to go right, you want to go left. Look at somebody say, your neck is learning something. After a while, your neck going to talk to your head and say, you need to get some oil. Watch. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, right? For my yoke is easy if you yield. My burden is light if you surrender. For then you will find what? Restoration and rest for your soul. If you were to translate it in the Hebrew, it would be this. In the Hebrew, as a master rabbi, it would be, accept my interpretation of things. So when I accepted Jesus' interpretation of things, what was painful became joyful. Look at somebody say, when your soul gets healed, it will cause your soul to rejoice. Everybody say, treasure. Trial, greater treasure. I'm going to show it to you another way. This is appetizer. Anybody enjoying the appetizer? Okay. Here's how it goes. It's not good for the man to be alone. I will make him help me. Everybody say problem. Promise. Watch this. God has got to alter the man's state of consciousness to change the state of his life. <laughs> Everybody say, puts him to sleep. And when he wakes up, whoa! Jesus must change the state of your soul to change the state of your life. Wherever you are in your thought life is where you are in your life. The limits of your life are the limits of your thought life. Look at somebody say, there are some things you can't afford to think about. Second uh, Peter 3.18 Grow in the grace, the presence of God, the power of God, and in the intimate knowledge, the experience of knowledge of Jesus. So, watch this. So, when I received the healing work of the Holy Spirit in my soul, my life shifted completely, literally, within one year. I think it really took less than that. Here's where I'm coming from. Look at somebody say, his message just started. 
Everybody say promise. Problem. Everybody say getting in the right position. Everybody say the presence, the power, the provision. Everybody say the prosperity. I've got to position my soul under the lordship of Jesus so that he can bring healing and deliverance in my soul so it will bring transformation. Everybody say teaching that brings transformation. I remember I had this angel. He appeared to be African-American. And he is there. Handsome man. I don't want no ugly angels around me. All holy angels are really good looking. And he had a flaming sword in his right hand, he says to me. I am in charge of your transformation. Oh, I'm still working on this one, Deborah Denise. You want me to have another one? Okay. All right. Look at somebody say, God has an angel in charge of your transformation. But look at somebody say, but you have to receive the teaching and you have to act on the teaching. That's why James 1 says this, ready? Be a doer of the word. Are you still with me? Okay, watch. So, you ready? So, Ephesians 1.11 says that in Christ you have an inheritance. You say, well, I want to have visions and visitations and revelations and dreams and encounters. Look at somebody and say, get your soul more healed. Yeah, just get your soul. Look at somebody and say, get your soul more healed so you can perceive it. Okay, I'm going to prove it to you. How many of you in your spirit, through the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, Ephesians 1, 17, you feel like God is saying something, but your head can't get it. Raise your hands. The reason why is because there's a part of your soul that needs to be healed so you can access the revelation that's in your spirit. That's good. That's really good. Yeah, that's one of the things Jesus told me. He said, I'll reveal to you the mysteries. And he told me, he said, I made you brilliant. Because visions, dreams, and visitations are your inheritance. Look at somebody say, it belongs to you. And the blood of Jesus and the person and presence of the Holy Spirit has qualified you. Look at somebody say, it's yours. And so I'm, listen to me, you need to hear me. So I'm constantly working on my soul. Everybody say transformation. That's why when Deborah and I have intense fellowship, If she says something, and I recognize she's right, I say, I'm sorry, I repent. Look at somebody say, he does most of the repenting. That's true. Look at somebody say, you might try it. Look at somebody say, try it. Because the act of metanoi, or repentance, which in the Greek means that you change your mind, and it changes your behavior. <laughs> Opens your soul so you can get the revelation that's in your spirit. Can I say something to you? Not, you need to hear me. Revelation and visitation are constantly leaving the throne of God from the one who's sitting on the throne. It comes to earth and it stays for a period of time until it's perceived taken and acted on. But if you miss it, it returns back to the throne awaiting another time. So Ephesians 1 and 3 says, blessed be the God 
and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Everybody say, in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. This Greek word means realms, territories, and dominions. Listen to me. But the sickness in my soul is like negative gravity holding me down so that my soul will not ascend with my spirit to perceive what God is saying and doing. Look at somebody say, you got to get rid of the negative gravity. So when you do a John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The Greek word is exempt. Am I still making sense to you? Are you good? So let me, let me get intellectual for a minute. Look at somebody say, it won't last long. <laughs> Let's talk about three words for healing. Dia sozo. D-I-A-S-O-Z-O, which is a Greek word that means like total, complete salvation of your spirit and your soul and actually can be saving your body from a sickness and a disease. Okay? Second word is therapeo. Therapeo is where we get the word therapy. And it is one of the most used words in scripture for healing in the ministry of Jesus. And what it means is that you must participate in your own healing. The third word is the word yeo may I, and it talks about the means or the process of healing. Are you still with me? Okay, so now... Let me give you a, a testimony. A couple years ago, a woman was brought to me. She was 38. She had been through beyond acute trauma. She was into, um, she had had some complex trauma, which means it starts in childhood. She, um, several times a week, nearly every week, she was raped. It was a situation she could not escape. And raped even with stuff. And so, um, for years. And so, she's brought to me by another woman, and she couldn't look me in the face. And she, her trauma was so great, she could not describe with words, looking at me in the face, what had happened. So, I would have her write it down. And she, I would just have her write one incident, because that's where we had to start. Everybody say, Yale may I? The process of healing. Everybody say, therapeo. Everybody say, to participate. So she would write it, and I would read it, and when we first started out, she couldn't even read it out loud because somebody else's sin can make you sick. And because of the um, depth of the trauma, I mean, I'm not even going to... And so time after time after time, and eventually she got to the point where she could actually read it but not look. And then she got to the point where she could read an incident and look. And then, and she would be prayed for. Everybody say, prayed for again and again. Because, see, here's the thing. A lot of us, see, Jesus said this. Here's your clue. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. But in the Greek, it's continuous. Ask and keep asking and you shall receive. Seek and keep seeking and you shall find. Knock and keep knocking and the door will be open. Look at somebody say, stay with it. Okay? Every, listen, let me tell you how traumatized she was. Every night, I mean every night without exception, she would redream the trauma. One of them over several years. Even if that, after it was done. Okay, it interfered with the way she saw herself. It she was very negative toward herself. It interfered with all her relationships. She couldn't have a relationship with a man. She, she barely had any relationships with people. And so we had to, everybody say, sequence the healing. 
Because sometimes if it took a long time for you to get that sick, it's going to take a considerable amount of time for you to get well. Because the person can only receive, a person receives up to their capacity. And she was so shut down, she could only receive a little bit of healing. So this went on, really, for about a year and a half. Then she gets filled with the Holy Spirit. And then, huh, she's in a church, well, she's in a church service, and she is asked to put on a prisoner's jumpsuit, an orange jumpsuit, and she is chained. She's actually part of a message. And when she takes off the jumpsuit and a key is inserted to take off the uh, chains, something happened in her head. <laughs> she finally got the picture of what we had been saying and her nightmares stopped. Watch this. So now we're at a Sears conference. She comes. Watch this. And Jesus comes to her in a vision, in a church service. Look at somebody say, your head is being anointed with oil. And Jesus has her take off her old clothes representing the old man. Everybody say, the old soul. Look at somebody say, Jesus is restoring He's renewing. He's making you new. He was healing her soul. So she takes off these clothes, and he gives her a brand new set of clothes that are dazzling white. Look at somebody say, Jesus wants to clothe your soul. Put off the old man, which is corrupt according to his deceitful lust, and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It start, first starts in my spirit. But look at somebody say, but by the word, my soul got to catch up. Because I've got to get my soul in agreement with my spirit. When my soul gets in agreement with my spirit, then my soul and my spirit gang up on my body. And my body has got to line up with the revelation in my spirit and the application of the word in my soul. And look at somebody say, and there's healing. And there's transformation. Okay, Tony, how does this work? So I have an injury. The injury was significant to the point where I was in pain laying down. I don't know if you've ever heard me talk about this. Yeah, I usually don't tell a lot of stuff. Um, you should check with my wife on Face to Face with God Part 1 and Face to Face with God Part 2. Um, Check with, check with the missus. So uh, I was in pain sitting down. I was in pain laying down. I couldn't put my shoes on, couldn't put my socks on. I was in pain. And so uh, you do know about the stuff about the knees. I thought I was going to have to have a left knee replacement, a right knee replacement. <laughs> it was bad. So here's the first thing I do. I want to go to the doctor. Now, this may not fit you, but it fit me. Because I want to know what the target of my faith needs to be. So I let the doctor tell me, this is the problem. Okay, there's no problem. Everybody say, that's the problem? No problem. So let me tell you my next step. So I say, now, nah, Lord, because, you know, I basically, you know, this... When I was able to walk, I was walking like this. And when my assistant was taking me to the doctor, every bump he hit hurt. How many of y'all ever had that experience? Every bump. So I said, Lord, what do I do here? So 
you know, when my soul got clear, because sometimes, <laughs> look at somebody say, sometimes it takes a while. Clear your soul to clear your vision. And the Lord directed me toward, now I'm he hear me. He directed me toward Proverbs 4 and 20, where it says, my son or my daughter, the first thing I want you to do is to attend to my words. Because in the Greek, the word therapeo is to be doctored or to have a physician or to give attention or to give care. And anytime you're dealing with a physician, he's going to give you a prescription. So my steps in my prescription were, number one, pay attention to the word. Number two, incline your ear to my sayings, which means to obey the word of God. Do not let my word depart from before your eyes. Keep my word in the midst of your heart. My word is life to you and medicine to all your flesh. But it's going to be life to my spirit and life to my soul to be life to my body. Are you still with me? So here's what I did. <laughs> all I did, I couldn't do nothing else. I listened to the word on healing all day. All day. I couldn't do nothing else. All day. Now, let me tell you what's going on in my head. Because while I'm listening to the word on healing and reading healing, here's what my head said. Because I'm still in pain. It ain't working. Okay, that's what's going on, all right? Because my head had all, my carnal, my carnal mind, because of the pain, was responding to the pain. Because it didn't seem like it was working. Okay, all right? But I kept doing it. I kept doing it. I'm still working on my soul. Beloved, I wish above all things that you what? Prosper and be in health as your what? So prosperous. So I, I would read the word and I would go, hey, Lord, I would quote all them scriptures. I'm the Lord who heals you. Mm -hmm. The Lord heals all your diseases. Mm -hmm. God has sent his word and healed me. Your, Lord, your word is life to me and your word is healing to all my flesh. And I'm believing that every time I'm quoting that, God is doing healing. So I just kept at it. I'll never forget. I just kept doing it. And then one day, my pain was gone. Okay, now I can move. This was on a Friday. Huh, kept doing it, didn't stop. Look at somebody said, don't stop when you feel better. Oh, you, you need to hear me. I went to the doctor, in addition to that, <laughs> Another doctor said, you're diabetic. Let me give you some medication. Oh, y'all don't right here. Anybody here know about diabetic pain in addition to the other pain? Where you get that shooting pain in addition to the constant pain. So, you know, I would, I would do this thing. You ready? I am free from strife. I forgive others like Christ has forgiven me. Amen. Ready? Ready? Blood sugar starts going down without the medication. I'm at a point now where I have to keep my blood sugar up. <laughs> I'm not on any medication. Right? Right? I'm speaking, watch this, I'm speaking life I still do this, even though, even though I have no pain anywhere. No pain anywhere. I would talk to my body. My spirit would, the word would speak to my spirit. My spirit and the word would talk to my soul. The word, the, my spirit and my soul would talk to my body until my body I thought I was going to have knee replacements. I would preach in pain.
<laughs> and people would be healed. And I'm hurting. I remember I was in Florida <laughs> and they had a dinner and I could barely sit down and I could barely get up. I'm thinking, I don't even want to be at this dinner. I just want to go lay down somewhere and take as many Tylenol as my body can take. Trying to, what's wrong with y'all? Trying to escape pain. Just for a little while. Is anybody hearing me? I would love to tell you I got healed overnight. <laughs> so anyway, on Saturday, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Now, the doctor was going to the church while I was preaching. And when I, I got up Sunday, I'm preaching. And the doctor's looking at me. I'm pain free. But you know, I, I didn't stop going to the doctor. Yes, I did. I went back and he looked. And so he can't say it's a miracle on paper, but he said it's a miracle. But in your head, okay, you ready? When I got healed, when I was getting healed, I felt nothing. While I was being healed, I felt nothing. I just woke up one day and the pain was gone. I'm coming to a close. Hebrews 6 and 12 says this. Be a follower of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Watch this. Count it all joy when you fall into different temptations, knowing this, the trying of your faith works patience, but let patience have its full effect that you may be mature and complete, lacking Nothing. If any man lack wisdom. And so in this experience, walking through the process of pain, I got a wisdom on how to get myself healed and then how to get you healed. I love it when it's a miracle. Bam, it happens right now. But I have a friend of mine. You ready for this? I was just with him. <laughs> he goes to the hospital for a routine kidney stone, right? And bacteria enters in, and he dies. And he's dead for one hour and 45 minutes. And his wife, his name is Dean, his wife is praying him back to life. He has 29 diseases, that manifested in his body with the bacteria went all the way through his body. You ready? He wasn't just brain dead. Iron 45 minutes, he was brain dead. He was clinically dead, no breath, no pulse. He was biologically dead. His feet became black. Wow. Now, he, he's in heaven. He's having, he's having a big time. <laughs> okay? He's having a big time. And he's loving heaven so much, he don't want to come back. Here you go. See how you feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get up there. Find out the throne of God and the Father sitting on the throne can be seen from everywhere in the third heaven. Okay? And Jesus, when you see him in human form, has chocolate brown, brown hair, that falls onto his shoulders, chocolate brown mustache and beard and the white robe, unless he decides to light up. Now you need to, I'm telling you, you ready? And then when he proceeds up, okay, everything moves. Grass moves out of the way. Trees move out of the way. Everything moves out of the way because everything in heaven's alive. Even the atmosphere moves out of the way. And as he goes up, Look at somebody, as he gets closer to the Father, the light gets brighter, and so does Jesus. Now, this is going to mess with your head. Now, there are three that bear witness 
There's three that bear witness in heaven. Everybody say the Father, the Word, the Spirit. So the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are co-equal, co-existent, co-eternal. But I saw Jesus walk into the Father. And then the glo- it gets brighter and brighter. And then the seven spirits of God, they got close, bigger and bigger and bigger as Jesus approached. They all went into Jesus and the Father. That's why it says, in the midst of the throne, there appeared a lamb. But yet they're three, but they're one. Jesus said, I'm in the Father, and the Father in me. And then Jesus said, I'm in you, and you. Look at everybody say, you in Jesus. Jesus is in you. You in the Father. The Father is in you. I'm going to leave you alone. So in order for me to experience the fullness of that reality, I have to get my soul healed. Because you're complete in your spirit in Christ Jesus. To know that, though, experientially, your soul must be healed. And then changes happen in your body. Does that make sense to you? I know I've been going quite a while, but I I just want to get you established in the word. Hear me. And so I'm going to close with this. Because I don't share all my heavenly experiences, not even in these two books. I don't, I don't do it. <laughs> you ought to watch a flyer, praise the Lord, though. And these musical notes come out and dance through the atmosphere that itself is alive and go into the Father. You ought to watch, as I did, thousands upon thousands of saints on their knees Everybody goes down like this. Everybody comes up like this and worships the Father, right? And a cloud arises. Okay, we'll go to the book of Revelation. There's a golden altar, and an angel offers something with the prayers of the saints, not just on earth, but in heaven, right? And then this, this uh, pure thought Pure light, pure love, and pure life comes out of the sons and daughters of the Father, and the Father inhales it, and then he releases. Everybody say the circle of love. So you are so loved. Because in heaven, everyone is number one with the Father and Jesus. Do you have ranks? Yes, but as a son and a daughter. Look at somebody say, I'm the Father's favorite. Look at somebody say, and you the Father's favorite. Look at somebody say, how that can be. Now here's, here's where I'm closing. Romans 8.32 says this. If the Father gave his Son, Jesus, how is it the Father will not, with Jesus, how is it he will not freely, everybody say freely, give you all things? Let somebody say, it's free. So it's given. What I have to do is remove my soul blockages so I can receive it. And that's what this weekend is about. I know we're laying foundation. Now I'm going to tell you this. I've seen more totally blind people see than I can remember. More totally deaf people hear than I can remember. I've seen people get up out of wheelchairs, sugar diabetes, cancer healed, heart conditions healed, 
Body parts appear where there are none. I've seen Jesus raise the dead five times, including in front of people. Okay? I've seen all kinds of other miracles. <laughs> so, and, and this is going to mess with you, and I'm completely detached from it. So if a person gets healed, I don't take the credit. If they don't get healed, I don't take the blame. It's neither my success nor my failure. Because let me tell you what I get. You ready? Now, you need to hear me. When I pray for a person and they don't get healed, I am sowing for their healing. Jesus said these words. He said to his apostles, I sent you to reap where others have sowed, and you have entered into their labors, so that he who sows and he who reaps rejoice together. Here's the point that I'm making. When you pray for somebody and they don't get healed, you're sowing for their healing. Here's the thing that we don't get on earth. Prayers in heaven do not have a shelf life. That's why in Acts 10, it says, the angel comes to Cornelius and says, your prayers have become up and your giving to the poor have become a memorial. Look at somebody say, they get remembered. So when you pray for somebody and they don't get healed, you're sowing for their healing. So they get prayed for 25 times, and 24 times they don't get healed. But all the prayers collect on number 25, and the person gets well. Let me give you a recent one, and I'm, this is my third closing. I'm really closing now. <laughs> Have you ever noticed the preacher's minutes are longer than regular minutes? So I'm in California, young woman, six years of age, uh, has three inches of bone missing in her spine. She's in the Shriners Hospital. She's shorter than what she's supposed to be. Uh, at one point, she couldn't walk, and then she was able to walk, and she walked like this. And I'm telling the parents she's going to get a gradual healing. She was supposed to have surgery. They take her back to the Shriners Hospital. And three inches of bone grows in her spine as strong as an adult. This is what the surgeon says. You ready? She grows four inches. Each one of her feet grow an inch. Right? <laughs> they, they go in and tell the, uh, tell the surgeon. We had Tony Kemp pray for him. He says, yeah, I know, I know who Tony Kemp is. Surgeon now. And the girl didn't need any surgery. You know, they they you know, you'd be surprised about some of these doctors know who Katie Susie is. They just can't put it in the AMA report because it's not, you know, the American Medical Association. You can you can say it's unexplainable. You can say it's in a remission. Look at somebody say, but Jesus can fix you. Stand to your feet. You've been sitting for too long. Go ahead and stretch. Some of y'all kind of old. Says the man with the gray hair, right? Just stretch. Now, you may think that this is just my opinion, but I'm in New York, a woman there, her eye is gray. We have it on film, she's blind. Two women of that church decided, each of them, to fast 21 days for her healing. I come up, bring my happy self, slap my hand in her eye, rebuke the devil, tell it to come out, ask the woman, you gonna see? Mm-hmm. She starts seeing, her eye that's gray becomes brown like the other one, she sees perfectly. Do I really think that was my prayer? No. It was those two women who fasted a total of 42 days for their sister. 
That's exactly right. And God, one plants, the other one waters, God gives the increase. What's the scripture say? Is he who plants anything? No. Is he who waters anything? No. But God, everybody say, but God. Here's what I want to say to you because I'm starting to see words. The enemy wants you to fall into a state of hopelessness. He wants to convince you that that thing can happen for other people, but it's not going to happen for you. I've come to inform you the devil is a liar. And without you knowing it, you're in the process of being healing, being healed right now. You were being healed last night. You're being healed right now. You may not feel it, but it's still happening. <laughs> but when you start to see symptom reduction, then you're going to know the reality of it. And so sometimes the first thing that Jesus has got to get you to turn loose of is the fear that it's not going to happen. You need your soul healed of fear. How many of you have been struggling with fear and anxiety? Raise your hands. Keep them up. We've seen Jesus heal people of clinical depression, anxiety disorders. Jesus has healed people of bipolar disease, psychotic, schizophrenia. Jesus can set you free and he's doing it right now. I'm going to ask you to do something that makes no sense to you whatsoever. You're going to find this out. See, let me say this to you. It doesn't matter whether you believe me or not. When you get to heaven, you're going to find out that even when you as a son or a daughter worship the Father before the throne in the name of Jesus, even there, the Father releases his glory into you. In heaven, there's a relationship between praise, worship, and the glory. Your kingdom come, your will be done, right here, right now in the Greek, as in heaven, so on earth. So I want you to begin to praise and worship the Father right now. With your lips. Come on. Praise him beyond. We're going to take a few minutes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Between your praises, just say, Father, I apply the blood of Jesus to my soul. Don't plead, apply. And let out of your belly flow rivers of living water. It's the water of life that can heal your soul. That's the Holy Spirit. Does it take your time? Come on, for the next five minutes. Close your eyes, forget about everything. I apply the blood of Jesus to your mind. 
I apply the blood of Jesus to your emotions. I apply the blood of Jesus to your will. I apply the blood of Jesus to your soul. I release living water, healing waters. Keep going. Let glory come on you. I release that healing anointing on you. Give God a shout for about 30 seconds. Come on.
Lord, make her stronger. Make her stronger. We release healing virtue. Make her stronger. Restore balance and strength. may be seated for a moment. Let me urge you, if is it all possible for you, to try to attend tonight, tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, and if you're able to get free from your own church on Sunday, attend all the services. Let me tell you why. Katie and I um, talked about what happens is this, the revelation of the word builds the realm of the atmosphere for healings and miracles. Okay? And, and so realms are built. I, I was uh, doing a series of services and a man had a, uh, what's that disease where you, Parkinson's. He attended every service. And sometimes his wife would grab his hand, both hands are doing this. And she would grab it to stop it. In the fifth and final service, he's doing this and all of a sudden he stops. He was getting healed the entire time. He walks back to the table and writes that, totally healed by Jesus. Okay, so sometimes a person just needs to sit under the presence and the revelation of the word. So I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry. Okay? I'm not in a hurry. Uh, T.L. Osborne. How many of you have ever heard of T.L. Osborne? Raise your hands. Let me tell you what T.L. Osborne would do. Sometimes he would preach a whole week, one, two, or three services a day, and not pray for anybody. And in the last service, the evening, he would say, well, if you're blind, just start seeing. <laughs> and they start seeing. You ready for this? If you're deaf, just start hearing. And they ain't heard a word he said for a whole week and they start hearing. If you're crippled, just get up. And miracles would break out. This is why, you know, sometimes you need to, everybody say participate. participate. Everybody say with your attendance with your and with your focus. And so, you know, uh, so we get ready to close because I, this is the other thing I've learned is sometimes people have to process stuff. People got to process it. And then you can come back tonight and you can go, I think, I think I'm ready. So I, I, I'm waiting for you to get ready. <laughs> uh, and sometimes we have to thicken the atmosphere with healing and miracles. We have to thicken it. But anyway, so who's got the carpal tunnel? Wave at me. Carpal tunnel. Wave at me. Okay, I see you. Just keep waving. Now, who ha keep, uh, keep waving. Who has carpal tunnel and is bothering you right now? Wave at me. So is that a wave? 
I think that's the way. And then I see you and I see you. Ready? Stand up and see what happens. My sister in the back, stand up, see what happens. Stand up and see what happens. Just present your hands. Just present your hands. Jesus is doing something right now. When you feel pain decreasing, just wave at me because God's doing something right now. God's doing it right now. This is one over here. Oh, keep standing. God's, keep standing. God's still doing something. Hallelujah. No, you can just stand there. You don't have to do anything. Amen. Um, somebody else is being healed. It's um it's like right in here. Somewhere. There's a healing for you. Where are you? Is that you? They're straightening out? Yeah, if you keep moving, they'll get straighter and straighter. But I decree a creative miracle in that foot and in that ankle and in those arms. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry? You couldn't do that? It's been nine years before you could do that. Who knows her? Is that true? That's your what? I can't hear you. Has that been nine years before she could do that? I'm telling you, God is healing. Yeah, just keep stretching it. You'll be able to stretch all the way out at some point. No hurry. No hurry. Yeah, that's the woman that had the metal that disappeared. So, see, sometimes, yeo may I means your healing happens in stages. It's progressive healing. What's going on with you? Does yours hurt? Does it hurt now? That means God's doing something. Come up here, let me see. Yeah, bring that. Yeah. So you have metal there? Yeah. Right. Does it hurt? Yeah, go ahead and take a picture. Now now, okay, tell them what happened. Because cause it's hot right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, that means God's doing a miracle. Go ahead. I, my whole body feels really warm. Yeah. Um, there's a, um, tell, tell them what happened, how that got in the way, real quick. Oh, I was T-boned by a Mini Cooper on my electric unicycle. And um, how, how long is the, uh, the, uh, the metal? How many um, inches? Oh, I have no idea. It goes all the way from my... are up here. Do you know how many screws? Four. Four? Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, you said you, how long ago did this happen to you? August 5th. Of this year? Okay, just, just stay up here with me. I need somebody to stand behind him. A man. You'll do. Come on. Just stand behind him. You said you were in pain all the time? Uh, on and off, yeah. Were you in pain earlier today? Yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely? Yes. Um, 
was it a, uh, if 10 being the highest level of pain and zero being none, where would you put it when you were setting? Uh, four. Four? Where would you put it at now? Two. Two. Okay. Maybe one. Maybe one. We'll just stand here for a minute. Can I get y'all to praise the Lord? Now, why is your arm jerking? Yo, you have Tourette's. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Y'all keep praising the Lord. One of the things that people, if you ever look at the, um, the fruit of the Spirit numerically, and you look at the gifts of the Spirit numerically, you'll see that long-suffering corresponds to healing. In other words, you got to have patience. I got patience. I'm not in a hurry. I'm just going to let God be God and do it how he's going to do it. He's already started when he was down there. Were you here last night? Good. Because you're going to show some more miracle videos, right? Does anybody else here have metal and it hurts? So we got one. Can you come back tonight? Good. Good. Anybody else got metal and it hurts or a foreign substance? What's your foreign substance? Okay. So just, 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 just stay here. Okay, okay. And right here? Say it again. Okay. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no. Let me let me tell you the deal. No, you don't have to worry. No, no, you don't have to worry. I would have people bring me their uh, um, X-rays. Yeah. Okay. Morning, yeah, yeah. So I remember this one person. They brought 19 screws, and you know they would have two or three rods, and and uh, you know I was uh, in a meeting. This woman, she had um, metal all the way up through here. Um, I think she had 10 or 12 screws. I can't remember. This was just last Sunday night. And I don't know what happened, and I don't really care. I just know her pain was gone, and she could do this, what she couldn't do, and this. And we've seen God do that over and over and over and over. Because here's what I've learned. God will either take the metal out and make it bone, or he'll make that metal act like bone. Either way, you're good to go with no pain, okay? So there was a woman there. She had had two hip replacements. She was in pain. So I said, come this way. Watch what happens. And then she got totally healed. Another woman had metal in her knee, totally healed, all pain gone, walk normal. Another woman, um, she had metal right here. Part of her brain was missing. And she stood there, and the longer she stood there, then her pain was gone, okay? So... Yeah, you know, that reminds me, you talked to, we were in, uh, we were at the Big Ten event. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, the screw, uh, this woman has a screw in her leg. I have a vision of the angel unscrewing the screw, and she starts saying, I feel like something's unscrewing the screw. And then the screw disappeared, and there was a hole there where the screw was. I mean, I could, I could go on and on and on about, yeah, yeah. And so, I'll, this, this will mess with you. We were in Detroit, and a guy, um, his last two fingers were artificial. This was at a Baptist church. And his last two fingers that were artificial became real fingers, and he could move them. Okay? Real fingers. 
I could tell you some. I could tell you some stuff. What's going on with it now? My foot feels pretty funny. Your foot feels funny. That's strangely enough where most of the pain's been is every realigning and. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to let you go down there. God's going to continue working. When she calls for this and gives the command, watch what happens. See you later. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Yeah, take your stuff with you. <laughs> All right. I think it's time. Stand to your feet. Now listen, uh, I'm holding back on purpose. I'm holding back on purpose. And, uh, but God's doing something. Oh, I, I wanna give two of these away. Somebody come up here for, the, yeah, just take it. It's yours. Are you gonna come? Yeah. Just, just say. <laughs> All right, Pastor Darren, do I need to do anything else? Who do I turn it over to? Okay. Let's give Sandy a big hand clap as she comes.